Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make these, well this beautiful scarf first. I'm going to do the hat in a different video. With the hat there's no increasing, no decreasing and you get this beautiful little flower on the top of it like this. So I'm going, oh, there was something else I want to show you, wait till you see this. Now I want you to meet my granddaughter. This is, <laughs> look at this, this is, my daughter gave me this and um, I just couldn't wait to show everybody. It's a little scan of my granddaughter. This is Abby and Amy's still got 14 weeks to go. So she's due on the 14th of February and look at this, she's adorable already she really is and I know a lot of people have been so many people have been sending me messages and congratulations and I really appreciate it but most of all a lot of them people have been starting starting to send me yarn and we know for a hundred percent that um, the baby is going to be a girl and my daughter Amy is going to call her Abby and um some people have already been sending me packages of yarn and things so I can make things for Abby and some blankets and things and cot blankets and a lot of other people have been saying look I want to send you something for your daughter and your, and your granddaughter and um, how can we do it, what can I do and there's a lot of other people saying well we don't know, I don't know what to send you but um, can I just send a gift, um, a little monetary gift. Now I wouldn't recommend anyone sending me the money through the post. <laughs> Don't do that. I really, really appreciate it. I really, really do appreciate the interest, the huge interest in this little baby. And so what my daughter's done anyway, because she works in a big factory, but what she's done anyway for her friends and the other members of her family, she's made a wish list on Amazon. And I'll put the link underneath because if you click on it and if you do want to gift or something she's got on this list of things that some of the things that she still needs other than like a call and things like that but that's not on the wish list that's too big <laughs> and she's put some small items and things on it for anyone that wants to do that and i'll put the link underneath the video and i really do appreciate everyone asking i really really do and it's not something I would normally do on, on social media. And um, if, you click, if you see anything and you click on it, then what you do is you sign into your Amazon and it'll have um, Amy Russell. She's got Amy Russell on it and her address is hidden, but the gift will be sent to Amy. And for anyone who just, if there, there's so many people saying, look, let me let me give you a little donation towards getting something for your very first grandchild, your daughter's very first child, my my, fam, my um, own, I've got a daughter and a son, and this is the first baby in our little family. And for Amy and her partner's called Steve, and it's it's a uh, it's Amy's first baby. <laughs> Amy's first, our first little baby. And what you can do is you can use my coffee page. I have like a followers donation page, and it's called Coffee. And I always leave the link underneath the video. But if you put on it for Amy, then I will definitely one hundred percent give that to Amy, and she can put it into her baby fund for larger items that she'll need because she's basically starting from scratch as well <laughs> oh this is going to be hilarious having a baby in the, in the house I'll have a little model I'll have a little model I can make all these little things for her and she can be my model as she grows up and then she can inherit my channel <laughs> I'm going to teach her I've got it all planned already I'm going to teach her how to crochet as well from a very early young age and she's going to be in my YouTube channel and she's going and at my YouTube channel as well. <laughs> so funny. It's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful already. Can't wait for that to happen. Anyway, let's get on with the there's the lie back. <laughs> let's get on with this. Now, by the time I finish doing the 
this video for the scarf. I'm going to be on holiday. Anyway, so it'll probably finish in Florida. But I'm going to show you how to do this. Look at this. Absolutely stunning. Now, you would think this is all done in layers, and it isn't. It's done in a back loop stitch, and it's absolutely stunning in this. So I'm going to show you the scarf first. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to do the hat in a different video. It's got a different stitch count, amount of stitches. Now look at this, absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This is stunning. This yarn is called Kinko Riot. Kinko Riot yarn. And this one is called Chameleon. It is, I'm going to order more of this. This is absolutely stunning. I want to do a big blanket for my bed. I'm going to do a big runner for my bed in this. It's absolutely beautiful. Now you can make this into, you can make it bigger. I'm going to show you the actual pattern on it. It's absolutely stunning. Look at that. It is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. That is amazing. Now you can make these in, this into scarves and it gets that beautiful layered look. It, you actually think that you've got different colours under there all laying on top of each other. It's like flames. This is a beautiful flame V-stitch. The stitch count is 19. So what you'll do is do as many sets of 19 as you want. I've got one, two, three. So I did three sets of 19 and then I added 15 stitches at the end. The 15 stitches make these two halves to keep it symmetrical. And I ended up actually with one, two, three, four peaks on my scarf. Now, the more sets of 19 you do, the more peaks you're going to get. So if you want to do a blanket in this, then what you've got to remember is your chain's going to be really long and it's going to shrink in because of this very pointed V. So if you look at it like this, if I wanted to do a prat, if I wanted to do a blanket for a car seat, I would do eight sets of 19 and then add 15. My little hat that I've got there, I've got five sets of 19 and then 15 extra stitches. For a small toddler hat, you can do four like this. By the time you fold it, and it is very stretchy, so it would be four and then 15. If you want to do a shawl for yourself, then I would do 12. 12 sets of 19 and then add 15 at the end. So you get the drift of how to do this. Each peak is a set of 19 stitches and then you add 15 and it keeps your edge. It's actually, it should go this way. It keeps this edge nice and straight like this. It keeps that little pattern. Now you will have these peaks on the bottom, these extra peaks, well this is actually the top of it. You'll have these here and then you'll have full peaks on the bottom because your little half peak disappears in your pattern and it keeps it all symmetrical and look at that, stunning in this yarn. But it also lets you see what it'll look like in other colours. You can use any yarn for this, any yarn at all and use the hook size it tells you on the label. Now the stitch is a UK double crochet and that's a USA single crochet. That's the only stitch you use and you work into the back loop of the stitch. I'll show you that and it gives it this pattern and it's completely reversible. You get that beautiful, beautiful waterfall pattern on both sides. And it's the same if you do it all in one colour, you get that same sort of overlap look. So 
enough of that I'm going to show you how to do this so I'm going to start this off and I might end up having to finish it off or show you it all finished on my <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm on holiday so I'm going to do my chain and I'm going to do it in sets of 19 stitches and then at the end I'll add an extra 15 stitches so I'm doing a slip knot if you can't do a slip knot just put your hook down and tie it on just use the hook size it tells you to use for the yarn that you've got if you want a more open pattern then use a half size or one size bigger hook that's up to you if you want to do that so I'm going to chain one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen now it looks a lot but when you think it's going to get bent up like that it's not so do as many sets of 19 as you want the words of your scarf your wrap or your blanket done in so i've done my chain i've done four sets of 19 i've done four sets of 19 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra 15 stitches. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So that gives me my chain. Now into the second stitch in your chain. You can write this down if you want. You can write it down. So into the second stitch, you're going to put three UK double crochets. And if you're in the USA, these are single crochets. That's the only stitch you'll be using. So for the foundation chain, we're going to just go right through the stitch so that's one two and three now we're going to be working in sets of seven and five so that is three stitches and we need to go down until we get to seven so we're going to use four of the next stitches so count that as one two and three into the next stitch that one's four into the next one that's five into the next one that's six and seven so we've got three in at the beginning that's three four five six and seven now you're going to skip four stitches four so skip one, two, three and four. Now the next stitch you do is going to be stitch one. So skip four and go into the next stitch. So that is stitch one. Into the next one. We need seven. So into the next one that's stitch two, three, four, five six and seven now into the next stitch you're going to put five this is the top of the peak i'll get my scarf back now you can if you're a beginner into that first stitch you can put a marker if you want so you know where you're going to work into so what I'm going to do is if you're a beginner or even if you're not it might be worthwhile putting a marker in to that 
first stitch that you did here because when you do your next round you're going to put three into that stitch and you need to know where it is so I've got one two three I'm going to keep this one because I'm going to put it in the other end so that when I'm working back and forward I know where that very last stitch is because we're going to go into the back loops after this foundation we're going to do a back loop so always going to work into the back loop so I'll pop that down there so from our skipped four we've done seven stitches up So into the next stitch, you're going to put five stitches. Five. One, into the same stitch. Two, into the same stitch. Three, the same stitch. Four, and the same stitch. Five. And you get that peak. So you've got your first down in the valley and you go up and do your first peak now what is going to happen is when you put five in don't let that stitch get squashed or you won't have enough when you get to the end so make sure that when you've put that five in you're not going to lose that next stitch so into there we're going to work seven stitches down So that's one, into the next one, two, into the next one, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now what you're going to do now is you're going to skip four. One, two, three, four and into the next one. This becomes stitch one. One. Working up the way. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. So we're at the top peak into the next stitch you're going to put five one two three four and five now you're going to work down seven make sure you don't lose that stitch that's there it's one down two three, four, five, six, and seven. Now you're going to skip four. So you'll be doing seven stitches, skip four, seven up, then you'll put five in the next stitch, work seven down, skip four, work seven up, and put five in the next stitch so we've done the peak so we're going to skip four one two three and four that's stitch one so into the next one stitch two three four five, six, and seven. So into the next stitch we're doing a peak because we've done the one down the way we're going to do the peak at the top. So that's five into the next stitch. One, two, three, four and five now don't let your stitch your next one get skipped so into the next stitch 
one, working down, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Skip four. One, two, three, four. And into the next one. So that's stitch one. Work up two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now into the next stitch, put five. One, two, three, four, and five. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work down seven. So work down one, two, three, four, that's more yarn, five, six, and seven. Now, we're going to do the last half part of the peak. You're going to skip four. One, two, three, and four. Now, into the next stitch. This is stitch one. We should have four and one at the end. We only should have five left here. So that's stitch one. Stitch two. Stitch three. And stitch four. Now into my last stitch I'm going to put three double crochets and these are single crochets for you if you're in the USA. So into your last stitch put three. One, two and three. To pull that a little bit tighter. Now what happens here is when you skip four stitches, two on this side and two on this side, the three stitches here replaces the two that you skipped here. And on the peaks, you've got five stitches. So two of them replaces the skip, two skip stitches on that side and the two skip stitches on that side. So when you put five in, it's replacing the four that you're skipping. And this is what you have. Check that you're going down and up and down and up and down and up. Just to make sure that you haven't done two downs or two ups. You do your peaks and your little valleys. And this is what you have. So you've got one, two, three, I've got four peaks on mine and I've got one, two, three, four, five. You'll have five of the peaks going down the way. Remember, you've only got two halves here. And that's what makes this beautiful pattern. So to do the pattern, what we're going to do now is I'm going to move that off to the side. Keep a hold of your pin. You're going to chain one for the next row. This is when you measure it and make sure it's the size that you want it. If it's not, do you see how much it's pulled in? It's pulled in almost half the amount of the chain that we had. So make sure when you do this pattern that you do your chain long enough because it will shrink in. So chain one and turn your work. Now into, not that stitch, that's your chain one, into the next stitch, you're going to go only, from now on, we're only going to use the back loops. Every single row will be a back loop double crochet. Or if you're in the USA, it's a back loop single crochet. We're going into the 
back loop of that stitch here. We're going into the back loop only. So that's my chain one. Into the next stitch, I'm going to put three double crochets in that back loop. So that's one. But what I'm going to do is, that one, I'm going to mark it. So that's my last stitch when I come back. So that's one, two, three. That's three stitches. Into the next one, that's four. Into the back loop of the next one, that's five. Into the back loop of the next one is six. And into the back loop of the next one is seven. Now what you've got now is you've got two stitches here and we're going to skip one, two and two from this side. So we're going down and then we're going up. We're going to skip two stitches from here and two from the other side. So that's skip four stitches. Skip one, two, three and four. Go into the back loop of the next stitch. That is stitch one. Into the next one, that's stitch two. Into the back loop for three. Into the back loop, that's four. So we're going into the back loop of your V. Into the back loop. Four, that's five. Into the back loop, six. And into the back loop is seven. And you'll find you're at the top of the peak. So into the next stitch, put five stitches. Into the back loop of that stitch, you're going to put five UK double crochets. And if you're in the USA, that's single crochets. In the back loop, do five. One, two, three, four and five. Now if anyone thinks I'm over explaining this, it's so beginners can do it. I like to know that beginners can do stitches that look complicated but they're not. I want everyone to be able to crochet. So into the next stitch, into your next back loop, that is stitch one. We're going to work seven down. One, into the next one, to work down three, four, five, six. Don't let it twist. And seven. We're going to skip four. One, two, three, four. So skip one, two, three. Make sure I can see those. One, two, three, four, and into that next one. And that's stitch one. We're going to work back up to the top of the peak. So that's stitch one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now into the back loop of the next stitch, you're going to put five because you're at the top of the peak. So into that one, put five. One, two, three, four, and five. Into the next one, we're going to work seven stitches down. One, two, three, some more yarn there, three, four, five, six, and seven. Make sure it doesn't twist. Make sure it doesn't twist. So now we're going, we're at the bottom, we're going to skip four. Skip one, two, three, and four. 
and go into the back loop of the next stitch and that's stitch one we're going to work up and do seven that's one two three four five six and seven and to the next stitch you're going to put five one two three four five now these five stitches two I'll replace your two skipped here and the other two will be down here so these five stitches replace the skipped ones so into the next stitch make sure it's not twisted it will get easier to work so into the next one we're going to do seven down one two three four five six and seven so we're at the bottom of a peak so we're going to skip four one two three four and into the next one so that's stitch one we're going to go seven up one two in the back loops three in the back loop four of that stitch you've got your B stitch and you're going in the back loop how many of us that it's one two three four five into the next one six and then seven then put five into the back loop of the next stitch one two three four and five we're going to work our last seven down and we'll skip four one two three four five six and seven and we're going to skip four not around make sure it's not twisted one two three four and into the next one now you'll know that you've only got five stitches left here this is your half peak so that's one so into the next stitch just turn that round the right way don't get it twisted that's one two into the next stitch is three into the next stitch is four so that's four five six and seven all go into this last stitch and that's why i've put the marker in so into this last stitch you're going to put three stitches one two and three take your marker out chain one and turn so ignore the chain one don't do the chain one go into the next stitch and put three one i'm going to put my marker back into that whoops got it i'm going to put my marker back into that first stitch of those three this is going to help beginners i might even help you help you if you're experienced to make sure you that's the one where you put your three stitches so that's one into the next one into the side that is two into the same stitch three so we've got three in that more first stitch and i've put a marker in the first one of those three so that is three stitches so count three this one's four into the next one's five into the next one six and into the next one 
into the back loops is seven. You're going to skip four, one, two, three, and four, and into the back loop of the next one. That stitch one, work seven up, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now into the next stitch, put five double crochets into the back loop. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going to work seven down, skip four, work seven up, and then do five in the next stitch. Work seven down, skip four, work seven up the peak and put five into the top stitch. Work seven down, skip your four, work seven up, put five in the top of the peak, work seven down, and your last little bit, you'll be skip four, you'll do four stitches, and put three stitches into that last one. So I'm going to work down to here and I'll come back and remind you about the ends. So I've worked along and I've put five in the top of my last peak and I'm going to work down this way. So I'm going to work seven stitches down in the back loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now I'm going to skip my four stitches. One, two, three, four, skip. Into the next one, that's one. I should have four plus my pin. That's one, two, three, and four and into my last stitch I'm going to put three so I'm going to take my marker out and into the back loop of that one I'm going to put three so we've done four so that's five into the same stitch is six and into the same stitch is seven so you put three into the last stitch and that keeps your edge straight. So you're going to chain one and turn. Ignore the chain one and into the next stitch put three. One, two and three. And I'm going to put my marker back in to that first stitch. So I've got one, two and three into there. So I know that's where I have to put my three at the end. So I've got three in that stitch. Into the back loop. This one counts as four. Into the next one counts as five. The next one counts as six. And the next one counts as seven. So skip four. One, two, three, four. Into the next one. We're going to work up seven stitches so that's one two make sure you count that stitch as number one once you've skipped them so that's one and two and to the next one three four five six and seven so into the top stitch the next stitch you put five one two three, four, and five, and work down seven. We'll skip four, work seven up, and put five into the top of the peak. Seven down, we're going to skip four, seven up, five into the top of the peak. So it'll be seven, skip four, seven back up, 
and five into the top, seven, four, and once you've skipped the four here, you'll have four stitches, and then you'll put three in the last stitch to make your seven. And you'll continue to do that, row after row, until if it's a blanket, it's as big as you want, if it's a scarf, it's as long as you want, and I'll show you in the next video how to turn it into a hat. So I'm going to work down, I'll work to the end one last time for you, and I'll show you that little half part here at the end again. So this is what we have now, and this is how it's going to continue growing. One, two, three, I've got my four peaks there. So I went down this last peak and I'm going to skip four. One, two, three, four. So into the next one, that's stitch one. Now remember you'll have four going up here. One, two, into the next one is three, and into the next one is four. Then into the one with our, our, our little marker, we're going to put three stitches. So that'll make five, six, and seven. Numbers five, six, and seven. So into this one, we're going to put three. One, two, and three. And that's your one stitch and two for the ones that you skipped here on this line. That's why we're putting three in. Chain one and turn. Skip the chain one and into the next stitch you'll put your three. One, two, and three. Now I'm going to put my marker back in to that first stitch of those three. Just pop my marker in. And that way I'm not going to get lost when I'm at this little clump at the end. So that's three. So into the next one counts four. Into the back loop of the next one is five. The next one is six and seven. Then it'll be skip four. One, two, three, four. And into the next loop is stitch one and work up seven. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And into the top you're going to put five in the back loop. One, two, three, four, and five. Work seven down. You'll skip four, seven up, do your five, seven down, skip four when you get down to the bottom one. And this is what gives you this lacy pattern. If you want it even lacier, you can use a bigger hook than what your yarn says. And it will stretch out. And I've got one, two, three, four peaks in my two halves. So that was four sets of 19 plus 15 stitches when I did my foundation chain. Now you'll just continue with that until you get your scarf or your blanket, however many peaks you've done, until it's as long as you want. And I've got, this is my scarf's got three and my hat's got four. It's got four peaks on my hat. So on the scarf, I've got three sets of 19 plus my 15. And on my hat, that I'm making a hat as well. On my hat, I've got one, two, three, four, five peaks. Five sets of 19 and then my 15. And I'm going to sew it together. When it stretches out, it's not, it'll fit. But that'll be in another video. Anyway. And this is what you'll continue to do. So, I've got to go on holiday now. 
and what I'm going to do is a little bit of magic. I'm going to click my fingers and we'll be in Florida. And with a simple click of my fingers, I have magically turned up fourth. Look at the dolphins. Now, this is the Edge Hotel in Clearwater. It's a beautiful hotel and if you take a golf view, look at this. There is dolphins out there. Oh my goodness. I think this is going to turn into a dolphin watch. Right in the middle where those bollards are, if I can show my hand, just around there. Now, earlier this morning, I got up, it was about past seven in the morning. The sun's out. When I arrived, it was actually raining, as you saw from the beginning, and then I jumped to this part. <laughs> I'm not very good at magic. But, listen to this, I think there's children in the hotel next year, in the room. But look at the dolphins, I think this is what they've seen, they've seen the dolphins. Oops, sorry about the shaky camera, there is, there is a whole pod of dolphins out there. I hope they come a little bit closer. I don't need to check out of this hotel until 11. Oh wow, look at that. What I'll do is, I'll do that way and then I can zoom in. Oh look, right where those, all those, they're right in the middle where all those sort of sticks are. There's a few away over there where that rock line is as well. So, oh, there's two there. One, two. My gosh, there's about ten. They must come here to feed. Now, if you're looking to see dolphins, if you are in Clearwater Beach, or come to the Edge Hotel and get a golf view room. I'm not getting paid to say this either. Oh, I bet you I could get a free room a night in the room, but look at this. Look at this. Oh, I wish I had a set of binoculars. And someone did tell me that if you come to this hotel, you do get dolphins in the bay all the time. I'll try and get it so it's not so shaky. But that scarf that I've showed you how to do, oh, they're coming closer. There's one that's coming closer. I wonder if I can get it. I've got the sun in my eyes. I can't quite see. There it is. Wow. Probably not even got it in shot, but there's one coming closer to the... It's over there. That noise is what you hear all night long. You hear, I'll tilt it down there. You've got the beach hooks. Just do this. So you just hear the crashing waves all night long if you leave your balcony door open. And there's no way anyone can get in because there's well, like eight floors up, 10 floors up or something. I don't know where it's going. You can hear a lot of people talking now because I think everyone else that's got a balcony has seen these dolphins out in the bay. There's a couple over here. They're actually all over the swimming. There's ones that are swimming over there, there's some that's swimming over that side, 
there's a couple that's away down here and I don't know if that mummy and baby will come back up. I think she's gone out to sea away over there. But I think they go out so far and they just turn and come back in. And I think a good point is to you watch where the seagulls are actually feeding as well. Usually means there's a little shoal of fish. And then you see the dolphins as well. Or maybe it's the dolphins that chase the fish in. Absolutely beautiful. A lot of people come along and they stand on those rocks along there. And you see them with their binoculars on there. I think they, they know that the, the dolphins come into this part of the bay. And then you've got the bridge over there. Look at that sunrise coming up. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yep, it's definitely a family of kids throwing stuff off the balcony as well. Yeah. Oh, I think I've taken a dive under. I'll maybe come back and watch for a while. And if I see them, I'll try and video them and I'll attach them on to the end. Because there is quite a little bit of time where you don't see any of them and then they just come back up to the surface. Obviously for air, I think. But anyway, let me show you this scarf and a hat that I've done. You're going, oh there's a pelican out there. I could see everything every time I come to do a video. Where is it? There's a pelican. This is amazing. Oh my goodness, to be rich enough to be able to just <laughs> have a house here and sit and watch all this. Isn't that pelican on there? My goodness. Now, <laughs> the very end of this video, and I'm going to hold the camera because <laughs> I, keep seeing, I keep seeing dolphins in this bay. Like I've said already, so I just keep getting totally distracted from this. Now, I did start this when I was in Scotland, and it is the the end of November, and even in Florida, the Floridians are going about with their hoodies and things. Oh, there's the dolphins back again. I don't know if I've got it in. It's going up beside where that pelican was. Anyway, what I'm going to do, oh, there it is. I don't know if you've seen it. Between the bars. So let's do this because if it's going that way, I can still do a little bit of video going on it if you like dolphins. You just hang around because, <laughs> oh my gosh, look at it. What is it about dolphins that makes everyone so either excited or feel so calm watching them? Absolutely beautiful. It's going away over that way. Don't know if you can see it in between those bars. Dolphin watch. That's what we should call this video. Amazing. I might just actually take all the little bits of video of the dolphin out and stick it on a video on its own. Especially that lovely noise of the, the sea down there. Anyway, right, this scarf. If you do it longer, you can make it into a blanket. And it's absolutely beautiful, this riot, this riot yarn. The, the, the hat video will be separate, but this is the way it turns out. It's absolutely amazing, this stitch. And just persevere with it because, look at that, it looks like it's all layered. It looks as if it's all layered the way this is done on that back stitch. Now I am getting totally, totally distracted. Oh my gosh, these dolphins are just, they're just popping up all over the place. This is an amazing hotel to be in. Anyway, 
if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe to the channel and if you click on the bell icon youtube will tell you when i put up another tutorial ah i just missed it i keep missing them jumping there's a mum and a baby that just keeps jumping up out of the water and it's always just sort of off line well and every time i pick my phone up they don't come back up and then when i put my phone down they're there again if my little camera thing wasn't so bouncy around, I would have just plugged it up there and left it for about an hour. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will just keep watching anyway because I am going to add all these little tiny bits of dolphin shots on the end of this video. But I'll look. I think one came up from down there. There they are. be a whole pod of them sort of spread out murky after all the rain and the wind because there they are look, right there there's one right down there so I've been counting them I think there's about 10 about 10 dolphins in the bay and we're in I'm in the Edge Hotel there you go look. that's just a single one I think sailboat now and they've spotted the dolphins as well because they're all up in the front and there's that one there right there see it right between me and the boat people just get so excited when they see them don't know where to look, my eyes are just, there's one jumping here and then you go to video it and then there's another one over there and you go to video that. <laughs> the time you move the camera then that one's gone. There is a couple feeding over there and here's this boat. Sailboat. Got a lovely day for it. Yesterday it wasn't very nice at all. It was raining but for us 
for being from Scotland, a little bit of rain doesn't bother me. Such tranquility, my goodness. Just to have a little apartment here. Sit here, watch a wildlife, watch the boats go by. Well, no worry, in the world you've got is the parry and my phone gonna last. <laughs> They're still jumping, have you watched the the water? You do see them bobbing up and down. They're definitely all the way over there. I don't know if it will show in the camera, in the video. You can see a definite, close to me, there's a definite sort of sandy colour, a blue part, and then further up the back there. That's where they're at at the moment. Over in the other corner. Maybe they won't come so close to this side because I know there's people here. They do swim by. Amazing. But they've been feeding over here in this part of this bay. So like I said, the bay is actually over there where the bridge is. And the land's all around it. And this is the golf is out that way, the open sea is that way. But they really prefer to feed here. Amazing. And you don't need to be staying at this hotel, like I said, to be able to go down, down around down there. There's lots of places if you've got a pair of binoculars that you can... There's a little walkway, if you can see it down there. There's a little line in the, in the metal fence and that you can actually just walk right along and come to there. Amazing. I don't even know if this is in the brochures that you can see the the dolphins in this part of the bay. Well, they seem to be way over there and heading out a little bit. This is where the noise is coming from. If you leave the balcony door open, that's all you hear at night. One last look, they're definitely jumping over there. I wish they would come over here and jump. Oh, that's the pelicans diving in the water. Like nature watch, isn't it? There must be a shoal of fish out there though for all the pelicans to start diving down. And the dolphins, maybe they're herding up the fish. I don't think it's me for eating anything. One little last look. Beautiful sunrise. On the water. Absolutely beautiful. And over there, Sun Key. I know that breakwater over there, there's the dolphins, there's people standing over there at those rocks. Dolphin watching. And there's... They're everywhere, they're all over the place. It's hard to concentrate on one area. You watch one and then one in front of you jumps. Amazing.
and that book is oh yeah look at that smell absolutely beautiful so i'm going to go for a walk along the beach and that's a dolphin watch finished if you just sit here all day Well, I hope wherever you are that you're watching, I hope you're having a lovely day, whether it's snowing, five feet of snow, and buffalo, and other places, pouring with rain in Scotland, and freezing, to this absolutely stunning, beautiful warm sunshine. Nowhere else in the world you could be. Now there's a big deck down here. There's a lady down on that deck. I mean, you could just sit there for hours. I mean, you don't need to be a resident of the hotel to actually. I mean, I can I way over there. There's a lot of pelicans diving for fish as well. And I don't suppose you need to be. There is ways around the down the back of here where you could actually just go and sit there and if you don't mind the seagulls and watch 
and the name of this hotel is the Edge Hotel and this is where you see the dolphins most of the time. A lot of people go down the beach, there's no beach here, have you seen this? It's all, it's all rocks. There is little parts of beach over there, that's where the Shepherds is, it's called Shepherds, the hotel that's along there a little bit. But this Edge Hotel seems to be, if you want to, in Florida, in clear water, and you want to watch dolphins, then come around to the back of the Edge Hotel. I'm hoping I'm getting this because I can't actually even see the picture on my camera because the sun is reflecting on it. And I do apologise if it's a little shaky, I didn't bring the right connection for just to clip it to the balcony and leave it there. But they are out. Oh, there's one. Did you see that one? Did you see that one diving? Right between those bollards, I can get my finger to point, there's one jumping up and down over there. A lot of them have moved over to that rock line. Great water. Definitely feeding, and it's definitely getting warmer now. The sun is beautiful. We're definitely diving over there. And those big pelicans. It's the kids for next door have gone. Stop throwing stuff out for the seagulls. There's that one there. All we need is just one to jump up, one to come along, light flipper, and just jump up and out. And we saw manatees in there. I saw manatees in there yesterday as well. I just thought it was a big lump of seaweed just floating by, but it was a, a manatee and a baby. There's, um, I think they call sea cow. Oh, there's one jumping. Did you see one? Oh, there's another one. Oh, they're definitely feeding in that middle part. They seem to like those bollards. So if you do come, just watch around those all those little bollards for the boats. There's a lot more people talking away down the bottom there, so I'll take it everybody's seen. Sometimes when you're here and people will say, where can I see the dolphins? You've got a lot of people. will go there. Everyone else is saying, oh, look. I think one came up from down there. There they are. And they're just open down here. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I wish it was closer. But I wish they would come closer. Mm -hmm. 